evening to you all. Uh, today we are officially coming to the close of this three-day retrospective on uh, the noted uh, Brazilian documentary filmmaker Joao Moreira Salles, uh, who for almost three and a half decades have been making documentary films and documentary films with universal subjects. Uh, a lot of his films uh, can be described or have been described by critics as films which uh, are not just specific to Brazil, but these are the films which uh, bring out the universal aspects of storytelling. Uh, we have been fortunate enough to include three of these films and which we brought for you with the support of India Habitat Center. I must take the opportunity to thank the director of India Habitat Center, Mr. Sunil Tandon, uh, who has been uh, very kind enough to, and also his team, who have been very kind enough to allow us this kind of a festival. As I said yesterday also, I would like to reiterate that documentary films have probably contributed the most when it comes to the growth of cinema. If, I, if we go back to the days of Naluk of the North, Robert Filetti 1922 film, uh, that was it where it all started the idea of non-fiction. He went all the way to the North Pole to capture these, uh, you know, Nanooks, the so-called, uh, you know, the native people who lived there. And a lot of dramatic recreations had to be done because by the time he reached there, he realized that a lot of things have changed about how these people lived, you know, in the tundra, how these people, uh, you know, used to deal with hunting and survival. So he recreated a lot of that. So, but the idea of documentary and non-fiction has been there, uh, you know, right from the very early days of filmmaking. And when I speak of non-fiction, over the years we have had some wonderful filmmakers. If I just take you just seven years after Nanook of the North, in 1929, we had uh, Ziga Vardov, the Soviet master filmmaker's film, Man with a Movie Camera which has again made it to the sight and sound poll, uh, which comes out every decade and this year again Man with the Movie Camera is in the top 10 films of all time. So this is a testament to the fact that non-fiction storytelling is as important if not more important than fiction storytelling. And if you just look at the kind of uh, you know advancement that entered cinema, uh, you will realize that these filmmakers who were operating you know with a lot of limited budgets, limited scope, but a lot of ambition and a lot of creative potential. They never allowed you know, cinema to stay stagnant. Uh, just take the case of the French New Wave. If you see some of the films of Jean-Luc Godard or if you look at the films of Francois Truffaut, you will notice that something is changing. But why is that thing changing? If you say, for example, watch a film like Breathless, Jean-Luc Godard's groundbreaking film, you will realize that there are certain tracking shots and you will see those scenes, you know, where the camera has been put in a car and they are going across, you know, Parisian streets. That was not possible if the documentary filmmakers would not have, you know, come out with these new kind of cameras. In fact, the person who shot that film was a documentary filmmaker. So a lot of these French New Wave films that you watch are actually a product of the documentary filmmakers paving way for these new kind of stories, for these new kind of filmmaking. I, for one, cannot imagine, you know, what John Rouge did with Chronicles of a Summer or what we saw with direct cinema coming to the fore. These new techniques that they brought in and if I just again go back to the idea of uh, fly on the wall, <coughs> that you just want to be a silent observer, I think documentary has given us so much and then we go to other kinds of, uh, you know, storytelling styles in just non-fictional space, for example, fly in the soup. And then there are other ways of how cinema verity tells us that wherein the filmmaker becomes a participant in whatever is happening. So these things have slowly evolved, but side by side what they have done is that they have also given ideas and thoughts to filmmakers who are probably working in more commercial space. So that's why I always feel filmmakers like Joa Morera Salles or if I go back a few decades to Agnes Varda or if I go to Chris Marker who has had a great impact on the body of work of Joao Morera Salles. If there is one filmmaker who has really inspired him, it's Chris Marker. And we all know the kind of wonderful films that Chris Marker made and some of those films probably remain the greatest films of not just non-fiction filmmaking but greatest film in the history of cinema. That's why I feel and I will go back to what I started with that why we need documentary films, why we need documentary film festivals, why we need documentary and non-fiction based retrospectives 
in these kind of commercial spaces because i think these are the kind of stories these are the kind of styles that are taking cinema to newer heights because cinema is not just about you know big budgets cinema is not just about great highly advanced technologies coming to the fore it is at the end of the day about creativity and the urge and the drive to tell stories that are important and filmmakers like joa morera sales who are you know at least for the last 3 4 decades been the beacons you know if i speak of non fiction filmmaking in the world of cinema are really uh, people who have really shown us the path they have been trail blazers in that sense and that's why a retrospective like this was important and we started this retrospective with the first film which was in the intense now uh, and then on the second day we brought for you nelson ferreri which is a film about this wonderful pianist classical pianist who was probably one of the top pianist of the last century if i spoke of the latter half of the 20th century he was probably the greatest if not you know the greatest of the entire century and definitely you know the last uh, half of the century definitely belonged to him and the film again you know uh, brought ideas of documentary film making particularly the idea of fly on the wall to the fore and the film that we have for you today is santiago which i feel is probably the most personal of all the three films uh, in this retrospective this time joa morera sales wants to focus on his family butler this guy santiago was an argentinian who served his parents who served him from 1956 to 1986 and uh, joa morera sales basically shot this footage what you would see in 1992 and then in 1994 uh, this butler finally passed away probably because of the you know probably the pain that the director felt due to some of the reason he just couldn't edit that footage and for a good 10 15 years that footage sat idle in one of the closets and it was only later around uh 2005 that he got back to it and he started editing it and the film finally came out in 2007 it won a lot of awards it won a lot of accolades Uh, so it's a very important film, and I think probably the best way we could have ended this retrospective, uh, which started with my meeting with uh, His Excellency uh, Ambassador of uh, Brazil, uh, Andre uh, Arana de Lago. Uh, I basically uh, met him at his residence uh, in Lutians, and this is a wonderful villa that he has, uh, you know, uh, taken. from his predecessor that he gave me a personal tour of that villa and it's there that we discussed idea of this retrospective and it took us some time with the head of uh, with the help of habitat center we were finally able to put it into place and so uh, it has been a journey but it has been a very very interesting journey and i'm really grateful to india habitat center to the embassy of brazil and to all of you for making this a successful event uh and also for allowing us to this, bring this new kind of narratives to india to new delhi wherein we see cinema uh in a very different form and in a very different shape that we are otherwise used to watching like yes we have been doing fellini we have been doing pasolini we have done you know interesting festivals in the city of berlin we have ibero festivals habitat itself has you know its own international festival and in the the indian festival and a lot of wonderful documentary festivals anyway take place at habitat and in, in delhi and around but this i feel is somewhat different in a lot of ways uh so with these words uh, i would uh, you know bring my uh, thoughts on this particular retrospective to an end but i would like to welcome the honorary honorable ambassador to deliver his closing remarks before you can start enjoying this film thank you so much well i'm sure everybody prefers to see the movie than listen to me so i'm going to be very very brief uh thank uh, first to thank mutasa for organizing this thank the um uh in the habitat center for hosting it and thank you all for coming uh and uh, uh yes i agree with everything you said about uh, the documentaries uh but most of all i think that the documentary uh, uh explains better to the public where it wants to go uh, so sometimes cinema is a cinema that takes for granted that the person that is watching the movie knows the context exactly in a documentary you have to explain the context and in this case 
we had uh, two previous films that were, I think, uh, very um, surprising somehow the way he approached it. But today maybe is, the, as you said, the most personal uh, because it is a person that was very important in his household during many years. And, uh, and I think that it is almost an investigation. It is a director that has a material and doesn't know how to use it. And I think that you will only understand where he wants to go, literally, in the last minutes of the movie. So it is an investigation on that absolutely unique person. You have never seen a person like that uh, in your life or in the movies. Uh, and, uh, and how can a serious movie maker make a movie about his butler? It's a very, very challenging uh, uh, adventure. So I hope you will enjoy very much the movie tonight. Thank you very much for the movie.